So this is an RTX 3070, and this is really old news because I just watched AMD's announcement of Big Navi. Uh, if you can see the smile on my face, it's because I just watched it, and it's super exciting because AMD is beating NVIDIA for a cheaper price. This is unbelievable. Let's get into the video and let's talk about what happened. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Thank you for joining me for another video. As you can see, having a hard time containing my excitement, I just watched the AMD announcement of their new generation of RDNA2 GPUs. So this certainly puts a very interesting spin on what has been a pretty unbelievable year, not only with everything else going on, but also with all the amazing hardware launches and all of the amazing stock issues that we've had. So let's get right into what we just saw. AMD announced their new generation Big Navi RDNA 2. They basically announced three different GPUs. You have the 6800, the 6800 XT, and then the top performing 6900 XT. Now, before we have a little reaction to each GPU, let's talk about some of the overall advancements that they've had. This RDNA 2, of course, is going to be the new version of RDNA. It's still on the same 7 nanometer process, but that doesn't keep AMD from having really done great improvements primarily they kept mentioning the performance per watt these gpus are considerably more efficient than something from nvidia as they pointed out for example even the 300 watt 6900 xt is considerably less than the 350 watt rtx 3090 so they certainly mentioned that they're a lot more efficient per watt for the performance that these gpus are putting out something else that amd made very clear and pretty much they're rubbing this in the face of Intel as well as Nvidia. They're pretty much the only manufacturer that does both high-end gaming CPUs. They consistently brought up Ryzen 5000. Not only is it the best CPU that they've ever made, but it's also the best set of CPUs pretty much for gaming on the market now. Previously, Intel always held that crown, but now with the Ryzen 5000, specifically the 5900X is their gaming king CPU, not to mention the monster 5950X, the 5600X, and the 5800X all really performing very highly at gaming according to some of the benchmarks that we've seen from AMD themselves. Having said this, they're really pushing that synergy. I mean, Nvidia doesn't do CPUs. Intel does CPUs and they've tried their hands at GPUs and there's some murmurs they may do GPUs. But at this point, Intel seems to be falling further and further behind from AMD. So it really looks like AMD is pretty much the one-stop shop for CPUs and GPUs. This isn't only for a saying you have an all AMD system, they actually announced something that I think may be tremendously important. They mentioned that with the Ryzen 5000 and these new big Navi GPUs, there's actually going to be a pretty important synergy, basically something that you can actually turn on in BIOS and you're going to get more performance if you're using a Ryzen 5000 CPU with an AMD RDNA 2 GPU. They said right now it's around 13% better performance and this is before developers have really even been able to optimize the game engines to take advantage of this new future so it's almost like you get an extra boost by using a ryzen cpu with your gpu so they are really trying to hammer it home on both ends for a while i thought all right amd seems pretty happy dominating the cpu market and right now if you go anywhere and build a pc most people will recommend amd just because it really is the best price to performance for the most part and Ryzen 5000 is really going to be the gaming king, so they've pretty much sealed the deal on that end. And before I, like many other people, thought, all right, AMD puts out some competitive GPUs in the mid-range sector, something like the 5700 XT. It's not too bad after the drivers were fixed. It's actually a pretty good performance value GPU, but I don't think anybody saw AMD's ultra aggressive push against Nvidia coming. Nvidia is an absolute giant in the GPU space. We really didn't think they were gonna try to challenge the 3090. The 3080 was even like, all right, it may be cute. They may be trying to you know, beat it by a little bit, but most in cases it's kind of fall short, but the 6900 XT actually challenging and beating the 3090, that's pretty incredible. So let's talk a little bit about each announced GPU. The first one is going to be the RX 6800. Now this is going to come in at $579 and it's going to be released on November 18th. So we're certainly very close within the next month. Now AMD specifically brands this as their 1440p GPU. So 
I guess you could say it kind of falls somewhere between the 3070 and the 3080. The 3070 technically is an MSRP at 499, which has very similar performance to the 2080 Ti, and AMD specifically compares the 6800 to the 2080 Ti. They didn't even mention the 3070 at this point. They did say it just outperforms by a larger margin, the 2080 Ti, since the 3070 is so close already to the 2080 Ti. I'm assuming here that this 6800 will also outperform the 3070 and of course with a price of $579 we certainly expect that it should outperform the 3070 just because it's going to be a little bit more expensive and by AMD's own analysis of it versus the 2080 Ti it seems like there certainly is a bigger gap than just between the 3070 and the 2080 Ti so if it does have these performance increases over the 3070, I think 579 is certainly a pretty fair price. Not to mention that most 3070s will probably retail for around there anyway. Only the Founders Edition and some of the lower end SKUs are 499. So you can expect a third party 3070 like from Asus or EVGA to pretty much be pretty close to a 579 price limit. Generally the third party GPUs, especially the ones that are a little bit more high end, will certainly come in at those higher prices. So very interesting that AMD actually decided to announce everything above the 3070. They didn't even announce anything that's a little bit below or close. I guess they're really going for the win here and giving themselves a pretty nice gap between the 3070 and the RX 6800. Like they said, this is going to be the perfect card for 1440p gaming. And they didn't even mention 1080p because I really do think the trend now is for people to start upgrading to 1440p as it gets cheaper and cheaper. 1440p monitors have been getting a lot cheaper lately that are pretty high refresh rate pretty good performance and of course who doesn't want a little bit more resolution if it's performing so well with these new powerhouse gpus and then the second gpu that they announced also coming november 18th at a price of 649 dollars 50 dollars less than the rtx 3080 this is going to be the RX 6800 XT. Now, this is the GPU that AMD had shown the benchmarks sort of equaling or beating the 3080 during their Zen 3 announcement on October 8th. So at $649, it undercuts the 3080. And by AMD's own benchmarks, it does show it at least very competitive with the 3080 and in a lot of cases, actually beating it. So that's certainly very surprising. AMD is going to build this card as their 4K gaming card. So that means it's an Ultra 3080 competitor. For the first time, AMD is really competing at this high-end scale. And who knows with that new synergy that they have with their own Ryzen CPUs, as developers start to optimize their games more and more. And do remember, AMD is gonna be in all of the next generation consoles. So that means that they have a big advantage in terms of developing for PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. So that means game developers are gonna be able to use the same AMD hardware across all three, meaning better and better optimized games in the future. This is a big difference from the past where generally Nvidia was surely going to be optimized for gaming much more just because of their dominant stance in the market. So this 6800 XT at $649, if stock is good when it's eventually released and if these benchmarks really pan out that it's pretty much a 3080 or a little bit better, I think we have a pretty incredible GPU here, and it may be the new performance king in terms of value that you're paying, the performance that you're getting. So we have something potentially huge on our hands. And of course, this is gonna depend on stock and how these GPUs actually perform in the real world. But from the information we have now, it certainly looks very good. And the last bit was a little bit of a shocker. But if you followed AMD launches in the past, you know that they like to hold sort of the big boy at the end. For example, even something like a, a Zen 3 or when they announced the 3950X, they always say, oh, but there's something more. And then, of course, the CEO comes out on stage and announces the RX 6900 XT and announces the 6900 XT. Now, this one is going to launch in December, so differently from November 18th for the other GPUs, and it's going to have an MSRP of $999. While you may think, oh, that's a little bit expensive, but the benchmarks that they showed, and this is where I was really shocked, it shows it equaling or beating the 3090, which is a $1,500 GPU in various different games. Now, this is a big shock. I didn't think AMD was gonna try to compete with the RTX 3090. I thought high-end means 3080, and everybody was fine with that. 
but to see them beating and equaling an RTX 3090 for $999, that is an extreme price difference. I'm really curious how NVIDIA is gonna to respond to this. They absolutely need a 3080 Ti. Now it makes sense that they scrapped and canceled the 3080 20 gigabyte VRAM version because that's not gonna be enough to take on this GPU. They need a 3080 Ti, probably priced lower than $999 or at least very close to that. But even that is not gonna beat this GPU if the 3090 is already struggling against it. They would need something with 3090 plus performance for a cheaper price. So this looks like to me, AMD really put Nvidia in a very tight corner. If stock can pan out to be good, if the driver issues are smooth, if games are optimized, we may have pretty much the most killer high-end GPU that we've ever seen for the price. For $999 to have something that's beating the 3090, that is a huge delta, and I think it puts NVIDIA in a very tight space. So between now and when these GPUs launch and we actually see the real benchmarks, AMD provided their own benchmarks. And from my experience looking at NVIDIA and AMD's own provided benchmarks, it seems like they've been pretty close. Um, I mean, these companies don't want to overhype these GPUs when it comes to the actual numbers because that's something people can test and it's just going to make them look bad. But in general, the company provided benchmarks. They seem to at least be pretty accurate. It, and it makes sense. You don't want to disappoint and frustrate people with inaccurate benchmarks that would really turn off consumer trust. So it makes sense for them to provide numbers that are actually going to be backed up in the real world. Now they can hype these GPUs up and market them in a way that maybe you might think is a little bit exaggerated. But when it comes down to the actual numbers, I found them to be fairly accurate. And now, of course, what does this all mean? First of all, Congratulations to the consumer, to us. We have an absolutely like crazy competitive GPU space now. This is what happened with the CPU marketplace, you know, the last few years with Ryzen. We finally have it in the GPU space. This is probably the most exciting GPU time that I've ever seen because we have highly competitive GPUs from both ends. Now, this certainly isn't over yet. Having announced them and having the numbers, um, it's one thing, but we're going to do a lot of content on this because there's a lot of smaller detail factors that are going to really dictate how dominant these AMD GPUs are going to be versus Nvidia. We have significant topics to talk about that are different from just the price and the performance. For example, how stock going to be? That's really what's on people's mind. Availability in stock is the biggest factor at this moment in time. The performance and price are great, but availability in stock is going to be huge. Second, how will AMD sort of see that their drivers are optimized, that they don't have issues? In the past, they've had some issues with the 5700 XT and things of that nature. How are they going to compete with NVIDIA in terms of drivers? And then, of course, we have other things to consider, like ray tracing. Is NVIDIA still going to be dominant in ray tracing? They have DLSS. They have certain technologies, certainly, that are an advantage over AMD. So does that mean that in the future, hardware is not going to be as important? The competition is going to come down to the software that each side has? That's possible, considering the hardware from AMD and NVIDIA are so powerful now that they really have to start going to these ulterior methods in order to get a performance advantage. Case in point is using Ryzen 5000 with the AMD GPUs for you to get yourself an advantage. So it's very possible that we may see sort of hardware reach such insane levels that we're going to be looking at the difference between these GPUs on the software side. We're going to be looking at G-Sync versus FreeSync. We may even be looking at changes in the professional market. Of course, Nvidia's encoder is really substantially good at this moment in time. It's better than AMD, but AMD becoming more dominant. Will the professional applications start to take more advantage of AMD GPUs. That's really possible. I mean, AMD certainly has a, a stronghold on the Apple computers, which a lot of creative and content professionals use. But there's no doubt, gaming aside, NVIDIA is certainly the most dominant GPU manufacturer for the professional and workstation applications. Will AMD start to open up better encoders and better support? Well, if there's any time that this might happen, it's now because they have the hardware to back it up. So this is an absolutely amazing time. I still can't believe they beat the 3090 for $999, or at least they're pretty close. Like, this is pretty incredible because I thought the 3090 was untouchable. We're going to have a lot more content coming on these AMD GPUs versus 
is nvidia of course the number one topic is going to be stock but then we have to do a deep dive into the actual hardware and software of these amd gpus we know how nvidia works they've been out we know how the gpus are behaving we have real benchmarks now but amd certainly is new and we have a lot to talk about and this is certainly very exciting for us so remember to subscribe if you want to see more content like this remember to smash that like button and i'll see you guys on the next video